Good morning, Gothos. Today I'm going to read you one of my favorite stories, and it's by one of my favorite authors, and his name is Kevin Henke, I believe. I've never heard his name pronounced, so I'm guessing. Um, and this story is called Lily's Purple Plastic Purse, but he's also wrote books like uh, Chrysanthemum and Julius and Sheila Ray the Brave, and all of his books are good. Chester's Way, Chester's Way is number two, number two favorite. So we're going to hear Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. Lily loved school. I love school. And then there's a recipe for us. She loved the pointy pencil. She loved the squeaky chalk. And she loved the way her boots went clickety, clickety, click down the long, shiny hallways. Lily loved the privacy of her very own desk. Mine. She loved the fish sticks and the chocolate milk every Friday in the lunchroom. Straws make everything taste better. I agree. And most of all, she loved her teacher, Mr. Slinger. For you. Mr. Slinger was as sharp as a tack. He wore artistic shirts. He wore glasses on a chain around his neck, and he wore a different colored tie for each day of the week. And then I like his sign, the boss is in. Wow, said Lily. That was just about all she could say was, wow. Instead of greeting students or good morning pupils, Mr. Slinger winked and said, howdy. He thought that desks in rows were old fashioned and boring. You rodents think you can handle a semicircle. And he always provided the most tasty snacks, things that were curly and crunchy and cheesy. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Me too and her friends, Chester and Wilson and Victor. At home, Lily pretended to meet Mr. Slinger. I'm the teacher, she told her baby brother, Julius. Listen up. Lily even wanted her own set of deluxe picture encyclopedias. Teachers know everything. What's with Lily, asked her mother. I thought she wanted to be a surgeon or an ambulance driver or a diva, said her father. It must be because of her new teacher, Mr. Slinger, said her mother. Wow, said her father. That was just about all he could say was, wow. There they are in class and it says, the light bulb lab where a great ideas are born. Whenever the students had free time, they were permitted to go to the light bulb lab in the back of the classroom. They expressed their ideas creatively through drawing and writing. Lily went often. She had a lot of ideas. She drew pictures of Mr. Slinger, and she wrote stories about him, too. During sharing time, Lily showed her creations to the entire class. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That was about all he could say was, wow. And at the very last door, it says, big, friendly, Mr. Nice Man Teacher. By me, Lily. At the very last second, Mr. Slinger saved the, clo the cold, starving, elderly. When Mr. Slinger had bus duty, Lily stood in line, even though she didn't ride the bus. Lily raised her hand 
more than anyone else in class, even if she didn't know the answer. Follow me, please, please. And she volunteered to stay after school to clap erasers. So way back in the old days, you would get chalk dust on the erasers, so you had to clean them out. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Excellent choice, said Mr. Swinger. I love her personality. And I love how Kevin Hinkies, the author, shows us her personality through the illustrations. One Monday morning, Lily came to school especially happy. She had gone shopping with her Grammy over the weekend. Lily had a new pair of movie star sunglasses, complete with glittery diamonds and a chain like Mr. Swingers. She had three shiny quarters. And best of all, she had a brand new purple plastic purse that played a jaunty tune when it was opened. There's her new movie star sunglasses with a glittery diamonds and a chain like Mr. Slingers and a brand new purple plastic. Lily wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Listen to our story. Lily had a hard time listening. Shh. Lily really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Let's be considerate of our classmate. Lily had a hard time being considerate. <laughs> In this picture. <laughs> Lily really, really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Wait until recess or sharing time. But Lily could not wait and he's teaching them about types of cheese and this little one's like, she's in trouble. The glasses were so glittery, the quarters were so shiny, and the purse played such nice music, not to mention how excellent it was for storing school supplies. Look, Lily whispered fiercely, look everyone, look what I've got. Everyone looked, including Mr. Slinger. And he was not amused. I'll just keep your things at my desk until the end of the day, said Mr. Slinger. They'll be safe there, and then you can take them home. I'm sorry if you hear my dog in the background. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. Her glasses were gone. Her quarters were gone. Her purple plastic purse was gone. Lily longed for her purse all morning. She was even too sad to eat the snack Mr. Slinger served before recess. That afternoon, Lily went to the light bulb lab. She was still very sad. She thought and she thought and she thought, and then she became angry. She thought and she thought and she thought some more and then she became furious. She thought and she thought and she thought a bit longer and then she drew a picture of Mr. Slinger. Do you think she's gonna draw a nice picture of Mr. Slinger? I don't. I can't even read it. It hurts my heart. It's not very nice. Right before the bell rang, Lily sneaked the drawing into Mr. Slinger's book bag. Wanted by the FBI. P.S. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up. When all the students were buttoned and zipped and snapped and tied and ready to go home, Mr. Slinger strolled over to Lily and gave her purple plastic purse back. It's a beautiful purse, said Mr. Slinger. Your quarters are nice and jingly, and those glasses are absolutely fabulous. 
You may bring them back to school as long as you don't disturb the rest of the class. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up, Lily said, and she marched out of the classroom. On the way home, Lily opened her purse. Her glasses and quarters were inside, and so was a note from Mr. Slinger. It said, today was a difficult day. Tomorrow will be better. There was also a small bag of tasty snacks at the bottom of her purse. Now she's feeling small because she made that mistake. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. She felt simply awful. Lily ran all the way home and told her mother and father everything that had happened. Instead of watching her favorite cartoons, Lily decided to sit in the uncooperative chair. I'll stay here a million years for Mr. Slinger. Why does everything always happen to me? 1051, 1052, 1053. Oops, she got to 1053. That night, Lily drew a picture of Mr. Slinger and wrote a story about him too. Lily was really sorry. So everyone forgave her, even her parents, even her stinky baby brother, her, even her especially incredible teacher. And then the sun shined its smiley face down on everyone and everything and even the bugs and worms. The end. Listen up, I forgive everyone. Could be principal. I am really, 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 really sorry. Worms, bugs. Oops, Lily. <laughs> I'm an author. Lily's mother wrote a note, and Lily's father baked some tasty snacks for Lily to take to school the next day. I think Mr. Slingler will understand, said Lily's mother. I know he will, said Lily's father. How could he resist my no frills cheese balls? What does it say? The next morning, Lily got to school early. These are for you, she said to Mr. Slinger, because I'm really, 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 really sorry. Mr. Slinger read the story and he looked at the picture. And he read the note. What does it say? And he sampled the snacks. Yum, yum. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That was just about all he could say was, wow. What do you think we should do with this? Asked Mr. Slinger. Could we just throw it away? Excellent idea, said Mr. Slinger. During sharing time, Lily demonstrated the many uses and unique qualities of her purple plastic purse, her shiny quarters, and her glittery movie star sunglasses. It's like having an extra pocket with a radio inside. Three quarters are even better than a dollar because they make noise. Glamorous protection from harmful rays. Then she did a little performance using them as props. It's called interpretive dance, said Lily. Mr. Slinger joined in. Wow, said the entire class. That was just about all they could say was, wow. Throughout the rest of the day, Lily's purse and quarters and sunglasses were tucked safely inside her desk. She peeked at them often, but did not disturb a soul. Right before the last bell rang, Mr. Slinger served Lily snacks. Everyone's delight. What do you want to be when you grow up? Asked Mr. Slinger. A teacher! Everyone responded. Lily's response was the loudest. 
excellent choice, said Mr. Slender. And now they are having snacks. As the pupils filed out of the classroom, Lily held her purple plastic purse close to her heart. Mr. Slinger was right. It had been a better day. Let me see if I can. Lily ran and skipped and hopped and flew all the way home. She was so happy. And she really did want to be a teacher when she grew up. That is when she didn't want to be a dancer or a surgeon or an ambulance driver or a diva or a pilot or a hairdresser or a scuba drive diver. And there's all her illustrations. I hope you enjoyed this story, boys and girls. Take care.